Hello everyone, my name is Tonino and today we're going to talk about Quarkus framework. If you've been to any uh, JVM related conference lately, you must have heard about Quarkus. If we look at the website, uh, we notice that they mention a Kubernetes native Java stack tailored for OpenJDK hotspot and GraalVM, crafted from the best breed of Java libraries and standards. Well, wow, that's a lot of words. Okay, but is this just another uh, Java framework or there is something else? The four pillars of Quarkus are the followings. Developer Joy, Supersonic Subatomic Java, Unified Imperative and Reactive Approach, Best of Breed Libraries and Standards. In uh, this video, we're going just to focus on the first two because it's just an introduction video. Uh, but if you would like to know more about Quarkus, uh, let me know in the comments and we will continue with the series. So let's head on on the uh, website, quarkus.io. And if we scroll down a little bit, we see this section of the page uh, where they mention something that seems quite incredible. So some memory footprints that is really, really low and also some startup time that is ridiculously fast, especially when compiling to a native image based on GraalVM. So this is definitely interesting and I can see a lot of usage for uh, cloud and serverless. What triggered my attention more is this developer joy. So I want to know what they're talking about. Let's try to build a very quick project and try to run it locally to see what they talk about. Turns out that Quarkus, just like Spring, has a project builder website, just like the started of Spring.io. This is code.quarkus.io, where you can configure your group, artifacts ID, build tool, and so on. Then you can just select the extension that you would like to use in your project. For example, in this case, we're going to use REST Easy Reactive. And uh, then you can just generate a zip file by clicking here and download it. Once you have your project, you can open it with your ID of choice and we can look inside uh, the folder structures. We have a folder with Docker with all the different um, Docker image for the different build that you could uh, create. And then, of course, we have our source code. If we give a look at the greeting resource class, it comes provided with a starter code. And I was very pleasantly surprised by seeing the use of JAX-RS specification, which is basically the de facto standards when it comes to Java and uh, WebRest development. The rest is, is pretty straightforward. To run our project, we can just run Maven, compile, Quarkus, Dev. And at this point, if we go and open localhost 8080, we will notice a congratulation page. You just made your Quarkus application with some information about our application, the extension that we have, and also all the uh, endpoints that are available at the moment. And of course, if we click here, we're going to see yellow Quarkus. Now, if we go back to the code and we say, okay, I don't want to load Quarkus, but I just want to load and we reload this page, we notice that we have live reloading, which is one of the concept for the developer joy. And uh, if we go to the terminal, we notice that the live reload, live reload uh, took half a second to do, which is pretty nice. And it was done by Vertex. Another thing I would like to mention regarding this page here is uh, the fact that there is a very extensive uh, dev UI. I really love this part where you can do all sorts of uh, inspection and live configuration of your project. So we can check, for example, the bins that are available at the moment in the container and also the type of scope that they have. You can uh, check um, the endpoints and even get a score for them. Uh, but the thing that I like the most is that every single dependencies or extension that is available provide a very handy uh, documentation link. And it is possible also to change uh, some flags directly from the UI with also some nice explanation on what they are about. When it comes to testing, we have also continuous testing, which basically allow us to uh, continually test our code while we develop, which is quite impressive. And here we are not talking about unit tests, but this is a full blown context. So we are literally running the application and uh, uh, doing some tests on the body. If we try to run the test with R, we notice that one of the tests is failing because hello Quark doesn't match hello anymore. Uh, therefore, if we change the expectation of our test to just having hello, then we have our test right away 
saying that it's passing again and it took only 431 milliseconds which is quite impressive now how to um, create one of those blazing fast executable that we saw before well the command is very simple all we need to do is maven clean compile package minus p native uh, just by using the profile native um, maven will take care of everything else now i would like to talk a little bit more about uh, this process so the big question is how does quarkus reach these crazy performances the answer is aot but it's aot is ahead of time compilation ahead of time uh, compilation is the process of uh, moving um, as much as possible to build time rather than have it at startup time so when your application starts it needs to do a lot of tasks um, here we see some of them so parse config files uh, class path and class scanning like annotation getters and metadata uh, build the framework meta model objects prepare reflection and build proxies and finally start an open input output threads and etc this process as you can imagine it's quite expensive in terms of time and memory so the um, ahead of time compiler tried to move as much as possible to the compilation time to build time everything that includes resource loading uh, serialization jni proxies is moved to to build time another things that the uh, aot does is try to remove that code so basically uh, it starts from your main method your entry point and it analyzes all the classes and all the type that are referenced from there building a tree and after that it eliminates everything that is not directly referenced this means that um, all those libraries all those projects that make use of reflection probably won't work if they are um, used in a, a native image uh, based on graal vm this also means that uh, you won't have the benefits of using the just-in-time compiler and you will also lose uh, the benefits of the uh, garbage collection which is quite good so if we go back to our project we noticed that he was built in roughly two minutes which is quite a lot for a just i lowered but now if we go into the target folder we will notice that we have one executable runner and if we try to run it we will notice that it starts up in 0 0.017 seconds including uh, the availability for the first response which is quite incredible once you see something like this you are like okay wow let's migrate all of my project to quarkus and let's uh, let's not use spring boot anymore right well it's not that easy uh, for different reasons one of the reasons is that as i was mentioning when you are using the uh, graal vm native image a lot of your uh, libraries won't work because they make use of reflection and a lot of other reasons nowadays most of the people still use quarkus uh, using the jdk approach which gives some benefits as we saw but uh, is not that uh, extra kick that extra speed that we get with the quarkus native image another thing that i would like to mention is that spring just announced native support in uh, the upcoming spring tree that is coming up exactly in the next few days and uh, this means that will be possible also with the spring boot project uh, make use of the ahead of time compilation but we still need to see if we will get exactly the same performances improvements as with quarkus so stay tuned for that that was it i hope you liked this video let me know in the comments if you like quarkus if you're using it uh, or if you're going to try it out and as usual, I'll see you in the next video.